Welcome, folks. I am Javi Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We're gonna look at my brother's video today from The Real Rejects. It's called Disney Buys the Rights to the Bible. Christ coming to the MCU. This video only has 8,500 views as of this recording, which uh, serves to frustrate me. I'm like, oh, why? I have a feeling I know what this video is about. The tone and the feeling, and I'm like, I love when Greg gets creative like this. Uh -huh. So, uh, all right, let's check this out. Leaking news. Craig T. Alba. <laughs> What's going on, you freaking leakers? I'm Craig T. Alba, your host today over here at the Leaking News. And boy, do we got some killer murderous reports <laughs> here to talk about today. News coming out of Disney, Marvel, some gaming news as well. And here to help me out today is first time guest, fellow YouTuber Greg Alba from The Real Rage X. Greg, how's it going, man? Hey, Craig, thanks for having me, man. My pleasure, my pleasure. Now, Greg, 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 <laughs> before we go into the show, I want to give a little plug and tell people who you are, what you're all about. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Uh, my name's Greg. Uh, I run a YouTube channel called The Real Rejects. Uh, over there we do like reactions, reviews, movie news, sketches every once in a while, you know, shit like that. Now, Greg, you said you do reactions. <laughs> Does that just mean people are watching your face while you're watching like a YouTube video or a trailer or something? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know it sounds silly uh, when you hear it, but... I think what people also really like about us is that we do our best to provide like commentary. That way, you're still getting like actual content on top of the reality. <laughs> That's why I get all that jazz. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, in terms of your content, do people actually stay after the reaction to watch your content, or do they usually just click off? Well, hold that thought. I do want to shout out a patron today. And if you guys have a particular question you'd like to ask, join the leaking Patreon page today. And if you're in the $50 tier, you'll get put into a monthly raffle where maybe, just maybe, I'll consider answering your question. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Oh, awesome. How many people are in that tier? A lot, Greg. A lot. I make a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of people in that tier. <laughs> so, yeah, but in all honesty, it all just goes to keeping the lights on around here. Mm -mm. Paying my one or two employees, depending on the day. Because let's face it, what we do here is really, really hard, important, necessary <laughs> work. And by we, I mean I. I, be I believe you. <laughs> Am I picking up on sarcasm on that tone? No. Hmm, well... I just watched your reaction just now, and I gotta say, yeah, just pissed me off just a little bit. Just a little bit, a little pissed off at you right now. I'm sorry. So two days ago, we landed a milestone. First Patreon page ever to do so. Here's a graphic for you. We broke one million patrons. Unbelievably grateful for the love and support that you freaking leakers have gone and showed our way. And with the channel memberships and merch that I constantly provoke but often forget to wear, it was important that I find a way to supplement that income for my lifestyle that YouTube ads can no longer provide on their own. I am planning on finding a charity where I can donate maybe five, six percent of all earnings to the charity. Just gotta find the right charity. Well, what about one that goes towards COVID or like Black Lives Matter? Whoa, Greg, Greg, Greg. Host talking, please. The yeah. first question today <laughs> comes from user X self-loathing dipshit X. He writes today, hey Craig, biggest fan of the show. Been watching since February 14th, 2005, the day YouTube was launched. I'm now 40 years old and still haven't found a Valentine. With cancel culture canceling people who did blackface, TV shows going into the archives to remove episodes featuring blackface. Are there any leaks or hot scoops you can give us with this development? Well, thanks for the question, next self loathing dipshit X. Now, what he's talking about is how shows like 30 Rock are going back into the archives and removing episodes that featured blackface. Recently, Jimmy Kimmel was called out for doing sketches that featured blackface, which were hilarious. Not, mm -mm, not hilarious. I'm all for representation, <laughs> diversity. Etc. As long as it feels natural. As long as it feels organic. As long as it doesn't feel shoved down my throat. Because otherwise, when it's white people, I don't even notice it. Now, before I go into it more, Greg, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I, I think representation is important. Uh, I, I think people get the memo now that you know, blackface is wrong. Blackface, what a funny concept. And then while I full heartedly support uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't 
know what you're really accomplishing or helping out by by you know removing episodes of 30 rock or golden girls yes thank you thank you i'm so fucking glad you're here thank you greg you're you're, you're welcome my sources my sources are telling me removing episodes from television shows that already are off the air is only the beginning. It's only the beginning. What my sources are telling me is that they're making Peter Fairley redo his Oscar speech for winning Best Picture of Green Book to properly thank Mahershala Ali. Do, do people still care about that? My sources are also telling me that HBO Max is temporarily removing friends so they can deep fake faces of people of color onto the cast for a re-release. That can't be. My sources, <laughs> and my sources are never wrong. And if they are, I won't admit it. Now, recently, you may have heard Mike Henry, who voices the hysterical character Cleveland Brown on the show Family Guy. Step down from the role so a black person can step in. Now, Hank Azaria already stopped voicing the character Apu, which is a shame, because if it wasn't for that character, I'd be scared to walk into any 7-Eleven. Wait, why? Now, there's the voiceover actor Harry Shear, who voices Mr. Burns, Ned Flanders, Principal Skinner, and he also voices the doctor on The Simpsons, the... the um, the, the black guy, whatever his name is. He's now being removed from the role. And this next one infuriates me. David Herman, who voices the black transgender character on Bob's Burgers, he's now being removed to be replaced by Hannibal Burris. Oh, wow. Now, what I've been hearing from my sources is that Nancy Cartwright, the woman who voices Bart Simpson on The Simpsons, after all these decades, is being forced to step down from playing the famous character. Really? Yes, now this one I agree with. Really? Look, I don't know who's gonna fill in for Cleveland Brown, but let's face it, no black person can do it better than him. Well, uh, I mean, uh, maybe. And for The Simpsons, <laughs> what kind of message are we sending for our young boys in America when one of the most iconic young boys portrayed on television is played by a woman? Right or roll for women. Don't just keep giving them roles that belong to the dom the male species. Wait, wait, you, you just defended the guy from Bob's Burgers. That's a different thing. I'm sorry to do this on your show, Craig, uh, but like I just have to ask: Are are you racist? I'm not sexist. I I didn't ask that. Well, no. <laughs> why would you insult me with such a question? I mean, you seem really upset about the Bob's Burger guy being removed. That's a different thing. Is it? Yes, the character is transgender. Does it really matter? Uh, this is a different conversation, Greg. This is about talented, hard-working actors and some actresses who are being unfairly pressured to remove or walk away from things they earned. Uh -huh. You see, this is the problem. This is the problem. You people on the far left, all you want to do is disagree in a non-civil manner. Just want to take people down. Ask my 85% white male audience, 10% people of color from southern states, and 5% female demographic. They know the real me. I don't understand why I don't understand why you're so like getting mad at me. I'm not sexist or racist. Every once in a while, I might say something from the heart from the mind, the subconscious areas where I'm not even thinking before I speak and realizing I have a camera pointed at me. <laughs> but I'm just being honest and speaking in facts. Does that make me racist or sexist? No, the far left is all about outrage. We need honesty and sincerity. Our next story today, which relates, Disney buys the rights to the Bible. Uh, what? That's right, <laughs> folks. Disney has now acquired the rights to the Bible, where they'll now have access to use any of the characters from the Bible in any one of their franchises. Now, my sources... Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. Who, who are your sources exactly? They're my sources. My sources. You can't have them. I don't want your sources. I just think it's important to know where you're getting your information. You know what? You're not going to pay today. Just sit right there. My sources <laughs> have told me what Disney plans on doing with the characters from the Bible. You may have guessed, and that's right, folks. Marvel. 
Jesus is joining the MCU. Now, I got early access to a press release that Kevin Feige is putting out tomorrow. But for you freaking leakers, I got the early press release today. He goes on to say, what we have accomplished over the last 15 years with superhero cinema has been nothing short of a miracle. Now it's time to introduce the real miracle worker. With superheroes <laughs> being touted as this generation's Greek gods, we thought it'd be great to not only fuse Greek and Norse mythology into the MCU, but now Christianity. Thor Love and Thunder will open up further realms where we will introduce characters from the Bible, eventually leading to Jesus leading the Avengers. Believers assemble. I gotta admit, some pretty inspiring shit if you ask me. Now at first, this news shocked me. It completely blew my mind. I grew up on Jesus Christ Superstar. I go to Mass twice a year, Easter and Christmas. And I love how Family Guy uses Christ to showcase he's got a sense of humor. The guy's got a sense of humor. Perfect for the Marvel brand. And I love Marvel. Mm -hmm. What they've been doing is incredible. What better way to resurrect... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no pun intended <laughs> to reintroduce Jesus Christ, a man with an already amazing origin story. Died on the cross, came back to life, can resurrect people from the dead, can walk on water, can turn water into wine while walking on water. And don't quote me on this, but I believe he can read minds. So this idea of Jesus coming into the MCU, you're going to ask me? Craig, are you excited about this? And my answer initially is yes. Yes, viewer, leaker, I am excited about this. But why did you say initially? Well, there's some further reports I have to leak to you guys today. You know how Marvel and Disney can be. They get pressured and they are slaves to woke culture. That's right, Jesus is joining the MCU, but they're making him a woman. What? <laughs> now, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but not my Jesus. Hashtag not my Christ, but it doesn't stop there. They're not, they're not only making Jesus a woman. They're making him a black woman. <laughs> Woke culture is ruining everything. There's plenty, plenty of female characters from the Bible they can choose from to adapt to bring a female character from the Bible to life. There's Mary, the Virgin Mary, mother of Christ. There's Mary Magdalene, the prostitute. There's some others that aren't coming to mind right now. If you want to bring Jesus to the big screen, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Peace be with you, I say. But to make him a woman? I don't know, Disney. I don't know. Okay, call me crazy. Now granted, I wouldn't have a career if I didn't spend all my time talking about the hard work that you guys put out on a daily basis, but this is bullshit. Woke culture is ruining everything. Might as well ask you, Greg, what do you think? Who told you this? Go fuck yourself. Now I don't know what else to add here, <laughs> but what do you guys think? Are you on the same page as me? Let me know down below. Make sure to take to Twitter to voice how you really feel about it because Let's face it, that's the best place to have this kind of conversation. This last bit of news I wanna talk about today, and I'll keep it brief. I feel like maybe people will think I'm being a little harsh on certain areas of the business today, but it's fine. That's fine if you think that you're entitled to your own opinion, but hey, someone has to call them out, right? Now, Laura Bailey, who voices Abby, the character in The Last of Us 2, she's been getting a lot of hate via social media. Death threats, to be specific. Now, if you haven't played the game, I won't spoil it for you. She's been receiving death threats, and I, I won't show the one she's put out, but I'll share with you guys the ones that stood out to me the most here. Um, This user says, my court order therapist says I should think before I say or do something completely idiotic. Well, at Laura Bailey, you should have done the same thing before committing the actions you did. Uh, this next post says, I don't know how to deal with my own lack of self-worth, and I can't distinguish the difference between reality and what's fiction, so you should go kill yourself, Laura Bailey, because you're responsible for my problems. Basically, it's a Kelly Marie Tran situation all over again. This voice actress 
is being blamed for the actions of a video game character, one that she did not write or even mocap for, to say the least. And now she's receiving death threats. And honestly, when are these women going to learn to stop making stupid ass decisions with taking on these roles? <laughs> the second you portray a character, even in the slightest bit of a voiceover work, it is now entirely your fault for ruining our lives. Video games, movies, shows, it's not just fiction, people. This is our existence. And instead of replying, Laura Bailey, you instead shared one of my tweets publicly. Shame on you, shame on you. It is my job to shame you. Reply back to me. Just grow a pair. Oh, is that sexist to say? Ridiculous. In other news, I got an email that people are gonna be protesting the grave of Alan Rickman for portraying Snape. Recently during quarantine, a lot of people ended up re-watching The Half-Blood Prince and they're pretty mad that Snape killed Dumbledore, so they're taking it to the grave. I'll be there. Feel free to join me. Could be a meet and greet. That's all for today, folks. Tune in next week for more amazing freaking leaking movie news. And Greg Alba, you're a bitch. Wow. There's commentators on YouTube who are becoming more and more prevalent, and they're gaining a, a stronger following, the, the, the traction. I think there's a place for everybody on YouTube. The thing about YouTube is it gives a platform to pretty much anybody. I like that. I like that it gives a platform to everybody. And with that, you can have the counter in the form of mockery, which is totally fine as well. I enjoyed Greg's take on all this. I wish that the video was shorter. Uh, yes, I um, agree with that. I don't, I don't think he needed to have himself as a guest in there. I think that it could have just been him as this dude. It's obvious it's not actually him with Craig T. Yeah. Elba, like it's, it's obvious. It was nice to have himself to play off of sometimes for those cutaway reactions and whatnot. Yeah, because I feel like his Greg Alba character is basically us. So right. it's kind of fun to to see like the eye rolls yeah. and just the extreme discomfort because right. it's like that's how I mean, at least for me, that's how I felt watching it as an audience. Right. You know? No, I felt that as well. Um I think that having uh, uh guests is is fun. It's it's a fun way to like as long as everyone's sort of in on, like between yeah. two ferns. Yeah. That sort of same sensibility of you know, we're all in on this joke together. It ends up making the episode longer. Yes. Unless you cut out some of the stuff. But that's sort of how those sorts of shows go, which I watch as well. I watch I try to watch everything. Left, right, center. I try to watch as much as possible. So I know what he's making fun of here. And those shows do tend to go on and on and on and they, they are just really frustrated and angry. The type of YouTubers he's, he's sort of mocking, they're always upset about something. They're always angry about something. They think they're open-minded and they espouse their frustrations. It's always that, they're always angry. And it's like the way they justify their ideas is always kind of like, huh, I guess I can see how that makes sense to you. <laughs> the thing about it is in between all the chaos, in between all the noise, the reason I watch them is because sometimes a kernel of interesting information comes through that is worthwhile. Right. I elect to watch everything in speed mode so I can absorb as much information from everybody as possible. And I do this with my politics as well. How games have become political is interesting because the people he's making fun of often talk about games. The thing about this video that throws me is that he's mixing false information with real information. Yeah. And so I I honestly wasn't sure what was true and what wasn't sometimes. Yeah. And that's sort of scary. It is also kind of hilarious to think about the idea that Disney bought the rights to the Bible. It sounds preposterous, but like in this day and age, I feel like anything is possible. Yes. Like if I were to say something outlandish about Trump, for instance, it wouldn't seem outside of the realm of possibilities that it's true. Yeah. No matter what it is. No matter what I say he said, he said, or no matter what I say he said, it seems plausible that he said that outlandish thing. Yeah. Right? I don't even have to be specific. You understand my point. And so keeping that in consideration with today, with 2020, anything is possible. I read some of the comments before watching this and there were some people who were like, I don't think Disney can do that. <laughs> like taking it very seriously. Yeah, and they can't because like there there are no rights to the Bible. Like no one actually owns it. You can just do that. If they wanted to do that, they could have done that already. People have tried to copyright the Bible and you can't. Well, yeah. There, there was something about that that came out years ago and the Guinness World Book of Records also talked about what book has had the most copies ever sold. Something about the Bible came up, but it's not a copyrighted work. Yeah, So you could use that. I'm more kind of leaning, I, well, not even more, like I'm definitely leaning towards Greg 
and his opinion of like, yeah, you know, it, it's great to have representation. That's great. But then you kind of take it to the extreme. Whatever side you fall on, this is the kind of video that you should be able to watch and enjoy and have a laugh. Yeah. Not everyone is built like that. Like I can watch something from Trevor Noah and Steven Crowder and have a laugh on both sides, but I know where I personally stand, where my feelings lie, yeah. where my loyalties lie emotionally, mentally, you know, in terms of what I believe in. I can still watch Trev uh, Steven Crowder and, and have a good laugh along, well, for the most part, with him. Yeah. And so with this, like, even if you are on the side of someone more conservative, I feel like you should be able to watch this kind of thing and have a laugh. Have a laugh at the people that you subscribe to and yeah. are your YouTube gods, so to speak. Or like know? the people that are being parodied. It, yeah, the, yeah, exactly. I thought it was a well-made video. His ability to play off of himself was actually really clever. Yeah. The timing of it all, it's, it's well edited. I don't know, it's funny because you have two camps of people, people who are like looking for that super short form content mm -hmm. and people who want longer form content. Podcasts are more popular today than they've ever been. Yeah. People want longer content. I think that a 15 minute video like this can appeal to a lot of people, but if you look at going back to a Trevor Noah, that content is often shorter, like 10 minutes or less, maybe 12 minutes. The only people I know who are doing longer content that's news related is Philip DeFranco. He'll, he'll go up as high as 25 minutes, and that's rare. Usually he's around the 16 to 18 minute mark, right? But that's serious, it's not comedy. Trevor yeah. Noah is a better comparison because that's comedy news. They max out around 10 to 11 minutes, as far as I recall. Whereas, the people he's making fun of that are more conservative, that content can go on a long time. Stephen Crowder videos can go on really long. Speaking of which, this video is getting to be long, so we should just call it here. I enjoyed it overall. I haven't decided yet if it should stay long form. I could feel the time of the video. Yeah. Maybe if he edited it tighter, it'd be different, and you can he can have all that he wants in there, and it'll you know retain its funny, retain its meaning, and whatnot. I think that the character on his own, this Craig character on his own, can espouse these ideas, and it's obviously sarcasm. And if you can't, yeah. if you don't get that, then shame on you. Like it's very obviously sarcasm. So I think he can just go in this alone and just do these like monologues. Monologues. Yeah, just like really and, lean into it. Yeah, I mean, he's already leaning into it. Right, exactly. Just like the way the people he's making fun of do. Yeah, just go you on know, a rant. Just go on a rant. Yeah. So that's what I would do. Anyways, y'all, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you if you did, make sure to go to Greg's channel and subscribe to his channel and also give an upvote to yeah. the original. Let him know your thoughts and feelings, positive and negative. It only helps him become better. I am Jabby Kuei. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.